Hi, and welcome to this video on some of the key principles in reactivity. Reactions involve collisions, and there are usually millions of each type of molecule present. Reactions involve collisions, and there are usually millions of each type of molecule present. That's a key idea to keep in mind, even though we are almost always drawing reactions statically on paper, and, is only, and only one of each of those molecule types at a time. As a better representation, the animation on screen shows two types of particles that are allowed to mix, although none react. We would also have to consider the molecular shapes, few molecules are spheres, and solvent, which would take up most of the space in a reaction vessel. The language we use about reactions can also be misleading. For example, we often say that a nucleophile attacks an electrophile, when in fact the two are simply colliding. There's no intent involved. So, a bond is going to break or form if the collision has sufficient energy and the molecules have the appropriate orientation. Reactions are dominated by electronic or orbital considerations. In this course, we focus on the electronics, electron density and charge, or ionic reactions. And we explain how the orbitals are involved. We will be analyzing collisions between nucleophiles and electrophiles. Nucleophiles bear at least one region of high electron density, a negative or partially negative charge, and electrophiles bear at least one region of low electron density, a positive or partial positive charge areas of opposite charge attract and react. So our goal is to learn to predict and explain these reactions. In the molecules on screen, please identify nucleophilic sites, areas of high electron density. Look for non-bonding electrons and pi bonds, negative or partially negative charges. I'll circle a few options, being as specific as possible. I'll circle pi bonds if they are the nucleophilic site, and the atom itself if that is the nucleophilic site. I can circle the nitrogen and oxygen atoms that bear non-bonding electrons, and even the pi bonds can be nucleophilic. Now identify electrophilic sites, looking for atoms bearing a positive or partial positive charge. I'll draw in some of the dipoles that then allow me to circle some of the carbon atoms that bear partial positive charges. Next, we want to be able to rank nucleophilic and electrophilic sites. That way, when we're analyzing reactions, we'll be able to identify the most reactive sites rather than having a mass of possibilities. First, to rank nucleophiles, know that nucleophilicity mirrors basicity, which means that a molecule or site that is a strong base is also going to be a strong nucleophile, and a weak base is a weak nucleophile. For example, if we compare hydroxide and fluoride, the more electronegative fluoride is a weaker base, it can better stabilize the electrons than the less electronegative hydroxide. The fluoride is also a weaker nucleophile. The hydroxide is the stronger base and nucleophile. If necessary, you can review the acid-base video that explains each of these factors. One of our key anchors in reactivity involves pKa values. pKa values indicate the strength of the acids and are experimentally determined values. They're also really useful to help us approximate the nucleophilicity of functional groups. A strongly acidic atom will have a weak conjugate base and nucleophile, and a weakly acidic atom will have a strong conjugate base and nucleophile. For example, we can check our predictions about hydroxide versus fluoride by drawing each of their conjugate acids, water and hydrogen fluoride. Water has a pKa value of 15.7, while HF has a pKa value of about 3.2. So, water is the weaker conjugate acid, making hydroxide a stronger base, and therefore more nucleophilic, as we had predicted. Let's look at the two categories of exceptions to that trend. First, larger atoms are stronger nucleophiles, although they are weaker bases. For example, sulfur and oxygen are in the same column of the periodic table, so their base and nucleophile strength are dominated by differences in atom size. The larger sulfides are weaker bases than the smaller hydroxides, as their electron density is more spread out and therefore better stabilized. However, sulfides are stronger nucleophiles. The larger sulfur atom is more polarizable, meaning its electron density shifts more easily, making it a better electron donor, and lowering its activation energy for its reaction with an electrophile. Second exception, more crowded atoms are weaker nucleophiles. For example, triethylamine is fairly basic and can readily react with a small proton. 
However, as a nucleophile, the nitrogen's approach to the electrophilic atom is hindered by the three large ethyl groups. They block the collision between the nucleophilic and electrophilic atoms, raising the activation energy of the reaction. We can rank electrophilic sites in an analogous way. When we compare the CO and the CN pi bonds, the more electronegative oxygen atom has a stronger pull on the electrons, making its carbon atom more electropositive and therefore more electrophilic. The last thing to consider is that acid-base reactions are usually faster than nucleophile-electrophile reactions, as they involve kinetically quick and easy proton transfers. To decide if that's the case for a given situation, check the direction of the acid-base equilibrium. This equilibrium tells us about the thermodynamics, but can also be used as an approximation. In the example on screen, the products have the weaker of the two acids, and so the products are favored. If the acid-base equilibrium favors the products, this reaction is likely to be the first in the mechanism. Finally, all the reactions in Organic Chemistry 1 and 2 fall into seven mechanistic categories, arranged by the governing mechanistic step of that reaction. Organic Chemistry 1 involves the first four, and Organic Chemistry 2 involves the last three. We've identified that the acid-base reaction dominates in the reaction on the bottom left, so it goes in category A. The reaction on the right would involve a collision between the nucleophilic hydroxide and the carbonyl carbon atom, so it would go into category B. In summary, reactions involve collisions between molecules in a setting where millions of molecules are involved. Bonds will break and form if the molecules involved have the required orientation and sufficient energy. We focused on ionic reactions between nucleophiles and electrophiles. We can rank these species using the same factors that we use to rank acids and bases with two exceptions that involve the nucleophilic atom size and steric hindrance. We saw that acid-base reactions are usually faster than nucleophile-electrophile reactions, particularly if the acid-base equilibrium favors the products. And we saw that while we see many, many different, different reaction examples, they all fall into about seven mechanistic categories.